Hello and good morning. Welcome back to our class. Our lesson for today is finding the zeros of quadratic functions and this is intended for grade 9, quarter 1, module 2. Our objective for today is to determine the zeros of quadratic functions given the equation and the graph. So if you are new in this channel, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon to receive the notification about my new videos. Alright, to recall what we have discussed in the previous lessons, let us try this example. Given the quadratic equation, x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0, find the roots in three methods. What are those three methods? The methods are, number 1, factoring, Number two, quadratic formula. And number three is completing the square. All right, so given the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0, we will use the factoring method in order to find the 0 or to solve this quadratic equation. So take note that if I have here x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0, so the factors are x minus 3 and x plus 2 is equal to 0. Now, using the 0 property, I can isolate now x minus 3 is equal to 0. Or, if I add both sides of the equation by 3, so x is equal to positive 3. On the other hand, if I have here x plus 2 is equal to 0, so therefore x okay, is equal to negative 2. So, we can say that the roots are 3 and negative 2. Okay, to recall the quadratic formula in solving the quadratic equation, given that x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Take note that this is already in standard form. Then we can determine the values of a, b, and c respectively. So we have a is equal to 1 b is equal to negative 1, and c is equal to negative 6. Using the quadratic formula, so we have negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Substitute the value of a, b, and c respectively. And then, we have this x. Okay, if we will simplify this one, x is equal to 1 plus or minus the square root of negative 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 6 all over 2a. So this expression will give us 1 plus 24. So that is why we come up with square root of 25. So 2 times 1 is equal to 2. Simplifying it further, we have x is equal to Okay, 1 plus the square root of 25, which is equal to 5, all over 2. Again, if I'll separate this into 2, I have this x is equal to 1 plus 5 is equal to 6, all over 2, or x is equal to 3. On the other hand, so 1 minus 5 will give us negative 4, all over 2. So x is equal to negative 4, all over 2, so x is equal to negative 2. So therefore, the roots are 3 and negative 2 using the quadratic formula. Okay, so given the quadratic equation x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0, so the next okay technique that we will use is actually completing the square. Now, so again, I'll rewrite x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now, I have negative 6 here. I'll move it to the other side of the equation. So I'll add positive 6 on the both sides of the equation. So I have x squared minus x is equal to 6. Then, take note that the numerical coefficient of negative 1 or negative x here is negative 1. So what will I do? I'll okay, consider that numerical coefficient. Okay. So I have here negative 1. Okay. And divide it by 2. 
and square it. Okay, so this will give us one fourth. So since I have now here one fourth, okay, what will I do is I add both sides of the equation by one fourth to maintain equality. So I have here plus x squared minus x plus one fourth. The next item that we will do is, of course, okay, factor this tri uh, trinomial, okay, into perfect square binomial. So I have here, guys, x squared minus 1 half squared and 6 plus 1 fourth okay recall that okay i can rewrite 6 over 1 plus 1 fourth okay so to make this one class of okay, improper fraction so 4 divided by 1 okay times uh, 6 is equal to 24 so and our lcd is 4 so then, 4 divided by 4 plus 1 is positive 1. So I have 24 plus 1 is equal to 25 over 4. So that is why I come up with 25 over 4. The next thing is I'll extract both sides of the equation. So that is why I have x minus 1 squared and take the square root, okay, and take the square root of both sides of the equation. Okay, so we will come up with x minus 1 half is equal to plus or minus square root of 25 over 4 or that is equal to plus or minus 5 over 2. The next, okay, I'll have here, I'll move negative 1 to the other side of the equation. So that is why we come up with positive 1 half, okay. So this is also positive 1 half. But take note, I'll consider 5 over 2 as the first root. So I have 5 over 2 plus 1 half. So that is actually 6 over 2 for x is equal to 3. On the other hand, if I consider the second root as negative 5 over 2 plus 1 half, so that is negative 5 plus 1 will give us negative 4 or all over 2. So negative 4 divided by 2, so x is equal to negative 2. So, we can say that the roots are 3 and negative 2. We recalled how to solve quadratic uh, equations using the three methods. Let's explore by examining the graph of the quadratic function y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. Okay, so how would you describe the graph? So, take note that the graph is actually parabolic. Okay, it opens upward. Next one. So, give the vertex of the parabola and its axis. So, the vertex is lying at negative point, uh, I mean point 0.5 and negative 6.5. Or, we can say that the vertex of the parabola is at 1 half, comma, negative 6 and 1 fourth. While the x-axis is lying on x is equal to 1 half. Next, at what values x does the graph intersect the x-axis? Observe that we have here at negative 2, 0 and 3, 0. So, the value of x, okay, does the graph intersect at x-axis is x is equal to negative 2, also at x is equal to positive 3. Next, what do we call the x-coordinates where the curve crosses the x-axis. We call these values as the zeros of the function y is equal to x squared minus x minus 6. And finally, what is the value of y at these values of x? We call this a while ago as the zeros of the function. So, if x is equal to negative 2, y is equal to 0. Also, if x is equal to 3, y is, is also 0. Okay, to explain further, the graph of a quadratic function is a parabola. It means the parabola can cross the x-axis once, twice, or never. Also, the x-coordinates of these points of intersections are called x-intercepts. In addition, Similarly, the x 
intercepts are the zeros of the function since these are the values of x when y equals 0. Finally, the series of quadratic function can be determined by setting y is equal to 0 and solving the resulting equation through different algebraic methods. Okay, to explain more, let us consider this problem. So find the zeros of the quadratic function y is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 by factoring method. So again, what we're going to do is we will let y is equal to 0. So such that 0 is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2. Applying what we have learned in factoring quadratic equation, so this is equal to 0 is equal to x squared Minus 3x plus 2 is the same as x minus 2 times x minus 1, which is equal to 0. So again, applying the 0 property, so that is x minus 2 equals 0 or x minus 1 equals 0. Solving for the value of x, so x is equal to 2 and x is equal to 1. So the zeros of the function y is equal to x squared minus 3x plus 2 are 2 and positive 1. Alright, so let's consider the second example. Find the zeros of the quadratic function y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 2 using the completing the square method. So, we will let y is equal to 0. Thus, 0 is equal to x squared plus 4 minus 2. If I'll move negative 2 to the other side, or if I add positive 2 to the both sides of the equation, so I have here x squared plus 4x is equal to 2. Recall that the numerical coefficient of x is equal to 4. So in order to complete the square, I'll take 4 and divide it by 2, then square it. So we have here 4 divided by 2 is equal to 2 squared. So this will give us positive 4. So I have here x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 2 plus 4. In order to maintain equality, I add 4 to the both sides of the equation. Simplifying it further, I have x plus 2 as the factored form of the trinomial x squared plus 4x plus 4 is equal to 6. Then, I'll take the square root of the both sides of the equation. Okay. So, I have now here x plus 2 is equal to square root of 6. But take note that if I will move positive to the other side, so I have here x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 6. So, therefore, the series of y is equal to x squared plus 4x minus 2 are negative 2 plus square root of 6 and negative 2 minus square root of 6. Okay, so let's have the third example. Find the zeros of the quadratic function y is equal to x squared plus x minus 12 using the quadratic formula. So, we will let, okay, y is equal to 0, thus, 0 is equal to x squared plus x minus 12. So take note that the value of a is equal to 1, b is equal to 1, and c is equal to negative 12. So applying the quadratic formula, x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Okay, substituting the value of a, b, and c respectively, so we have here, x is equal to negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 times 1 times negative 12 all over 2a. Okay, solving it further, we have here x is equal to square root of 1 plus 48 all over 2. Now, I'll consider now 1 plus 48 which is equal to 49. Take note that the square root of 49 is equal to plus or minus 7. So we have here x is equal to negative 1 
plus or minus 7 all over 2. If I have here negative 1 plus 7 all over 2, I'll come up with positive 3. Also, if I have here negative 1 minus 7, that is negative 8 all over 2, to give us negative 4. So therefore, the series of y is equal to x squared plus x minus 12 or 3 and negative 4. To elaborate our discussion, let us consider this example number 4. Find the zeros of the given graphs of quadratic function. So let's have this equation or quadratic function. Observe that okay, the zeros of the function is lying on x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. We can say that okay, the graph or the uh, of this quadratic function cross the x-axis twice. So we can say that the zeros are positive 2 and positive 1. On the other hand, this example or this graph cross the x-axis once. Okay? And the zero is at negative 1. On the other hand, this graph never cross the x-axis. So therefore, there is no real zeros for this graph. Okay, to find out whether you understand our topic or not, for our evaluation, find the zeros of each quadratic function using the most appropriate method. Alright, given the graphs, find the zeros of each quadratic function. Again, find time to solve our evaluation and check your answer in our answer key. Here is our answer key. Hopefully that you get a better score. So thank you once again and don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon to receive notifications about my new videos.